So, uh, <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter, which you should, or if you're in any of my Discord servers, which you should be, um, do you know Hatsune Miku's going to, going to fucking Coachella? Like, that fucker, she's going to fucking Coachella. Oh my god. This, this announcement has, a. Uh, invoked a question that a lot of young weeblets have asked before in a path many of us have tread. What is Hatsune Miku? I, as an entrepreneur and certified internet funny man and also three-time gaming world champion, um, I'm gonna answer this question. You know, there's been a lot of videos on this in the past, but I want to make my own. This video is not just an explanation of what is Hatsune Miku because that's a very short and simple question to ask and, uh, you know, 10 minute ad revenue, I think that's still a meme, so uh, making it longer. Plus, this is just something that I enjoy a lot and I can talk about it for a while. So, small history, a little bit of my own personal love injected into that, you know, as, as you do. Now, you may have just heard me say the word Vocaloid and you may be like, what the fuck is that? I thought we were talking about Hatsune Miku. Chill the fuck out, we'll get there. Uh, this video is also just, I wanna, I wanna convince people who like, they don't know what Hatsune Miku is to listen to Vocaloid because like, this is one of my favorite forms of music. Like last year on fucking Spotify for the like, the rewind thing, it was at the top of my list. I've listened to so much of this shit. It's fucking ridiculous. So to answer the initial question as succinctly as possible, Hatsune Miku is a Vocaloid. Alright, that's the video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, no. So, naturally, that means in order to answer what is Hatsune Miku, I have to answer what is a Vocaloid. Here's where the rest of the video is. Speaking in just strictly the most legal sense, Vocaloid is a software, a software released by the Yamaha Corporation in 2004 that is basically just a text-to-speech engine. Uh, this engine was designed intentionally for use with music. It's uh, it's not just a text-to-speech engine, it's got a musical interface that you can use to change pitches, change tone, yada yada yada. It's a, it's it's basically like a garage band sort of thing. The Vocaloid software uses various voice banks which are recorded from live voice actors and then parsed up into just little bite-sized pieces that you can plug into the program and just make music with. These are either produced by the Yamaha Corporation or some sort of third party. An easy way to think of this relationship is that the Vocaloid software is GarageBand and each of the individual voice banks, which are also known as Voic <laughs> Vocaloid, which is confusing, I know, those are more like the individual instruments. So Hatsune Miku is a guitar and then somebody else, I, fucking Gumi would be a fucking drum. Gumi is another Vocaloid in the similar vein as Hatsune Miku. So this is where it gets a little confusing. Vocaloid also refers to the voice banks, or more specifically, the anthropomorphic idols that they use to endorse them. That's where the little blue girl comes in. Um, Hatsune Miku is nothing more than a name given to her voice bank. One of the core ideas behind the Vocaloid project was that these weren't just instruments, these are virtual idols. So they are given these personas and these faces and these names to basically First of all, it helps in advertising, but they're supposed to be something that you can be a fan of, in the same way that you're a fan of Avril Lavigne. You know, you're not a fucking fan of Woodwood on GarageBand, you know, it's that's a fucking instrument. You're not a fan of fucking Siri, but you can be a fan of Hatsune Miku. Vocaloid didn't actually start to become popular, even in Japan, until, uh, until Hatsune Miku was created for Vocaloid 2 by Krypton Media. This may come as a surprise to many people who are softcore, boy, way to sound like a fucking elitist, many people who aren't as big of a Miku fan as I might be, may come as a surprise that Hatsune Miku is not the first Vocaloid, she is not the first one to be given a persona, she didn't even fucking exist until the software was given a updated version Vocaloid 2. She isn't even the first Japanese one, because the first two were actually based off of black singers. British black singers, like, <laughs> that's where that came from. <laughs> Hatsune Miku was just simply the most popular, and still is. 
She was just kind of that push they needed to become a mainstream art form. The point of these faces is mainly for advertising purposes because when people use these voices, they not only use the voice, they'll use them in album arts, they'll use them in the music videos. Some people use these characters as basically their profile pictures that they become known by as a producer. And it bas these characters basically allow this to not just be a form of music, but a cultural phenomenon. So to put that all together, Hatsune Miku is a face given to a glorified Texas speech engine. Got that? Cool. Now, if you want to get political, there's a lot of these things that are referred to colloquially, clo 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 cloacally, cloaca, as Vocaloid, but much as champagne is only champagne if it's bottled in champagne, they are not really Vocaloid. Uh, this is, it's a small nitpicky thing, if you get it wrong, like, literally nobody's going to argue with you on it, except for, like, one fucking prick. But it's nice to know, and it's something that I know, so I'm gonna talk about it. Uh, the, one of the best examples of this is the video playing in the background, Triple Baca. It features three of these little, little fuckers. The blue one, that we all know, that's Hatsune Miku. She is a Vocaloid. Vocaloid. We have the red one. Goodbye. Red one. She is Kasane Taito. She is an Atuoloid. An Atuoloid is almost exactly 100% like a Vocaloid. The only difference is, is that, uh, she works with a different software. Utua is a software that basically functions like the Vocaloid software, where you have voices that go into the program and that you can make them sing. But Utua is a free open source software that does not actually interact with the Vocaloid software and they are made by two separate companies and they are owned by two separate people. Finally, we have the yellow one, uh, she'll show up eventually, Akita Nero. Akita Nero isn't a voice bank at all actually. She is what is colloquially known as a fanloid or a fan-made Vocaloid. Uh, her, she doesn't have a voice bank. Her voices are usually created by shifting the voices of another Vocaloid and just giving her a fan voice. She does not have any official voice banks. What actually constitutes as her voice changes depending on the producer, and she just exists as a character. She is a fan-made creation that really doesn't even fucking exist. She is Project M. This is also a small question that I see some people ask a lot is, is Hatsune her name, or is Miku her name? Because Japan has this uh, different system than America, or, or most Western languages, Ro Roman languages, uh, where they give the family name first, and then your given name goes second. And most people will not refer to you by your given name unless you are close, or if there is some sort of very good reason to do so. So her actual name is Miku, that is the birth name, much as I am Brandon. Hatsune is her family name, so calling her Miku, at least in my in my understanding of it, is actually implies that we have some sort you have some sort of like close friendship with her. I'm not sure how that rule applies to celebrities. Uh, somebody should probably look that up for me. But yes, if she were a Western character, her name would be Miku Hatsune. Getting back on topic, uh, somewhere in the original script, I wrote the word producer. Uh, somewhere else in the script. I can't remember if I actually said that word, so we're just going to pretend like I have. Producer refers to somebody that does something with Vocaloid. In the most common and broad sense, it's an all-encompassing term, so like even somebody who just does Vocaloid art is still technically a producer, but it typically refers to the person when you release a song, it says, this is who it's by. You know, uh, much like Party Rock Anthem by LMFAO. LMFAO would be the producer in that sense, and Party Rock Anthem is the song. That is correct. All of these songs are not by Hatsune Miku. It's very common for somebody to put by their producer name featuring Hatsune Miku to indicate this is a Miku song because a lot of people like to just search out Miku music. But the S Yamaha Corporation and Krypton Media, the two owners of her, uh, have absolutely zero affiliation with the actual production of the majority of the music. There are some notable exceptions, but for the most part, the producer is the one that actually gets the money 
when a song is sold. Producers scale from anything from small-scale doujins who just release their music on Nico Nico Doga, basically Japanese YouTube, with other functions, to large companies, well, not necessarily companies, but larger scale producers like Supercell, who is contracted by Sony, had to remember the name, I was gonna say Sega. Sega also has some Miku affiliations with the Project Diva game, but that's, that's just another thing, you know? On a side note, the word doujin means self-published, and I'm not just using the word doujin instead of saying self-published to make an all according to Kyaku, translator note, Kyaku means plan joke, it, this is actually just a small PSA that I want to interject in this video. Um, the word doujin does not mean porn. A lot of people that read hentai will basically use the word doujin to refer to a hentai manga. Um, that's not true. The word doujin just means self-published. Uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of like in the same vein that if you say, I have written a fanfic, and then somebody goes, oh, is it smut? You know, fanfic does not necessarily mean it's smut, it just happens to be that a lot of fanfics are smut. So if you want to get technical, uh, for example, Undertale released on the PC would be a doujin. <sighs> Part of why I think people should listen to Vocaloid is just because it's so interesting to see how so many people work with the same constraint. Like, Everybody that makes Vocaloid uses the same set of voice mix, you know? Like, every Miku producer uses the same Miku voice. And for the most part, you know, some people use higher registers, like, uh, Neratu. Is it Neratu? Nayatu. Nayatu. Uh, some people like them will use higher Miku voices. Uh, one song by the producer, Utua P, uses a, like, a deep... Kind of voice for Miku, and it sounds cool in the song, but but for the most part, it's the same voice, and it's really fun to see how they use the same voice to just com convey completely different styles and fucking meanings. One of my favorite examples is like the producer Kikuo. He has a style that I would almost describe as like gothic carnival. which <laughs> I really like his songs. They're, they're, they're super upbeat and cheery and they've got like glockenspiel. One of his songs has a steel drum. There's like popping noises. It's just like, I'm having fun. But then the songs themselves will have like incredibly dark and strange themes. Uh, one song which I'm going to read the title of, uh, Kimi wa Dekinaiko. Probably fucking butchered that to all shit, but who gives a fuck? If, if you listen to the song without context, it, you could almost pass it off as a Disney song, like, it, without the lyrics. I would be like, okay, yeah, that, that could be a Disney background music. But the title of the, the song literally translates to, You're a Useless Child, and the theme of the song is about a mother who calls her child useless so much the child eventually kills itself. Like, <laughs> that's fucking brutal. Then you compare that to one of my other favorite producers, Deco27, who basically makes progressive rock. A lot of his songs just focus around loving and losing. That's, that's typically his theme, but there's heavy distortion guitar, the fucking drums go off. Uh, the song, I My Elegy, that one has just a fucking great guitar riff, like, it's just, uh, you know? The producer Miretsu is known for a sort of clubby style, you know, <laughs> but with, uh, like a sort of video game theming sound to it, lots, lots of chip tunes and whatnot. A lot of his songs are about just being confused and not knowing where to go in life. Then there's the uh, the producer Hito Shizuki. Uh, I, did I say that right? Hito Shizuku and Yama. Eh, there we go. 
I have I have no qualms about keeping the script on screen because some of these names are hard to memorize, okay? The fact that I know so many off my head, I should be applauded for that, damn it. Uh, Hito Shizuku and Yama have a series of songs that I could only describe as murder mystery. Uh, the, the End Night series, highly recommend it. It's just incredible how wide the variety of music is. It's like, imagine if you had Lady Gaga, you know, she has her style. And then just one day, you heard Lady Gaga's voice frontlining for Dragon Force. That's what it's like to listen to Miku. It's the same voice, just in a totally different setting, and it's fantastic. I, it just, ah. Like, that would be both batshit insane, but like, hype as hell, you know? So that ends up begging the question, why Vocaloid? Why would I abandon traditional singing for a robot that costs $250 on Amazon? The simplest way to say this is that it gives people who can't sing, who are not confident enough to sing, or just they want an extra higher register, their voice doesn't sound right, anything. It gives them that ability to produce music. You know, if they don't want to make lyricless stuff and they have a story they want to tell, Miku is a vehicle for that. I think Vocaloid also really plays into the nature of how Japanese songwriting works. Uh, a lot of the lyrics will be long-winded sentences, and you're like, man, that translation must be, like, not that good. That's not really true. That is how Japanese music sounds. Um, in Japanese, the majority of the syllables and vowels. Japanese is a syllable-based language for the most part. Pretty much any word that exists in their language can be constructed with a combination of syllables which are all displayed by the symbol symbol language uh, hiragana. You can you can write any word in their language with just those those symbols. And all of those all of those symbols and syllables end in a vowel or the letter N. You know, great example, the phrase Omaya wa mo Shinderu Nani. It either ended in an N or it ended in a vowel. Because of this lack of consonant ending, rhyming in Japanese is stupid fucking easy. Like, you will you will rhyme three times in a sentence on accident if you're like not careful. And it's so easy that Japanese poets just don't fucking bother doing it because it's so not special. You know, if I if I rhyme and I do it in time, you know, you're like, oh shit, that was <laughs> that was neat, you know? It's, it just always happens by accident in Japanese. That's why rhythm-based uh, poems like the haiku were made, because those complement the rhythm-based language, essentially. And because of this, lyric making doesn't, in, in America, lyric making is the idea of ke creating a catchy, catchy lyric, you know? You want something that, that's just like, oh shit, that was fucking, ooh, ah, you know? You don't do that in Japanese. It, it mo focuses more on the rhythm and the storytelling rather than just the catchy tunes. So, I don't necessarily want to say that it's easier to make a song in Japanese, but it definitely, it's a lot broader and more appealing and less, less introductory uh, terrifying. If you have a sense of rhythm, you can write a song in Japanese, essentially. That, that's, a, that's a very broad statement, but because of that, that plays into the way Vocaloid works incredibly well. Because just, if you have a story you want to tell, you can fucking tell it. You can also make the point that Vocaloid is more ethical than the conventional music industry, but that is a discussion for another time. So this brings me to my last question that I figure most people are going to ask. How the fuck do you make a text-to-speech engine perform in concert? The simplest way to express this is with video clips from Miku Expo, one of the or the biggest Miku concert hosted by Krypton Media. Um, typically, they will just have a hologram of Hatsune Miku or what other other Vocaloid is performing the song just on stage, dancing. They might have a live band, might not, you know. But it's mostly just basically a rave where you rave at a hologram instead of a DJ. Um, there's also smaller scale concerts like the ones Pinocchio P does. He uh, he does it in a concert venue. And he does his DJ shit, his band does his band shit. And Miku just kind of plays through the speakers. It's... 
It's basically just a giant conglomeration of people fawning over a similar object. And I think that's beautiful. So, in a broad sense, that's pretty much all there is to Vocaloid, you know? I won't go into all the small, minute details like character memes, character items, uh, just the whole culture around it. That's something that you can find out for yourself over time, or ask me personally if you're curious about it. At the end of this, I will leave you my Vocaloid slash Utatamita playlist. Uh, Utatamita is basically a word that describes cover artist, but for otaku culture. Um, it, it's about, I think the, li the list is like 60, probably going to get bigger over time, of just some of my favorite songs and covers when I think the covers are better than the original song. If you want my professional Vocaloid opinion on how to best consume this product, I recommend watching videos with the music video first, along with e English subtitles, because that'll give you a vibe to vibe with, a general idea of what the song is about, and usually if you know what the song is about, you'll enjoy it more. Um, and then if you like the song, I recommend watching it with uh, Japanese homogenized subtitles if they're available. If not, listen it to it again with the English subtitles, and then after that you can just listen to the song however the fuck you want. But I do highly recommend watching a lot of the music videos because some of them are borderline small-scale animes. Like, a great example is Android Girl by the aforementioned Deco27, which, by a side note, should be paired with the song Two Breasts Walking, as Two Breasts Walking is a prequel to the song Android Girl. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? They have prequels to songs? Like, what? But this song is so greatly enhanced by the visuals that occur near the end of the song when it hits its peak and like the story basically comes to its conclusion and like there's like a like audibly the song goes through like a bridge portion and then it goes to like the chorus where they reduce the instrumentation and there's like a brief pause and then like the whole everything fucking comes together as, as she's about to like stab the dude and then like it does a big pan and color floods in and like the realization comes that scene, it, it's giving me goosebumps just fucking thinking about it. Like, you gotta watch the video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoyed Vocaloid. More than anything, I hope my love and passion is able to go through the screen into your f stupid fucking heart. You know? And you should listen to it. Give it a shot, you know? Listen to my playlist. It's all bangers. Infinite bangers. Infinity bangers. You know what I'm saying? Hi, good night.